started an OCW test shot with uh, six five by forty seven. Uh, it's a Ashbury Precision Ordnance rifle. We're checking this in the Peterson brass. Peterson has come out with brass uh, for the six five by forty seven. We have compared that to the Lapua brass. The Peterson appears to be markedly better. Now you wouldn't think that because that's Lapua's. Um, you know, child there, that cartridge, but uh, the case necks of the Lapua cases are a little on the thick side and have a propensity for shaving <clears throat> jacket material. The Peterson brass is much more pliable, I guess you'd say. Um, now, how long will it last? Time will tell, but it's a very, very solid brass. It's made well. We're getting virtually no run out if you measure that sort of thing. So we're checking the H4350 powder, the Burger 140 grain target VLD. And the way an OCW test works, for those of you who don't know about it, we're shooting um, one shot of 40 grains at this target here. And then one shot of 40.2 at this target here. One shot of 40.4 at this target. One shot of 40.6 at this target. And finally, one shot of 40.8 at this target. Usually we'd jump in 0.3 grain increments here, but uh, we knew about where to expect to find the optimal charge weight of the OCW, so um, we kind of honed in at two tenths of a grain increments. So you come back through the second time, and you'll see uh, a little handy dandy Bic four color pen. You can still get these. I used to get those in school. Uh, it's pretty good for marking targets and having to carry a bunch of different things with uh, the number two I made red the, that second shot of 40 grains went right virtually in the same hole by the way this is at 100 yards and that's really where you want to uh, do an OCW test you don't want the wind messing up your results uh, the uh, audit test or the ladder test at 300 yards and some people say disregard the lateral uh, dispersion that's that's nonsense look we're getting lateral dispersion here and that's not wind induced so you'd have it out there at 300 as well so that'll lead you on a tail chase there shoot your OCW at 100 yards so there was the second shot of 40.2 second shot of 40.4 and so forth and we go through that this in this case we went through it four times so there's your third shot of 40 grains your fourth shot of 40 grains done in the round robin sequence. Third shot of 40.2, third shot of 40.4, and so on. And finally, the fourth shot in the blue ink of each group. Now, what do we have? Uh, an optimal charge weight load um, is going to be about one and a half percent away from what we call the scatter group. Um, one and a half percent above or below the optimal charge weight you will get a scatter group we like to find scatter groups that'll help us figure out exactly where we are on this continuum now we look at this and of course the first two shots of this group look like we we're going to have a one holer here at uh, 40 grains but as we went through and the barrel fouled a little more heavily maybe heated a little bit we were getting some dispersion that's normal. That's what you'd expect to get. By 40.2, we have three shots in one hole here, which uh, you could say, oh, this was a flyer. This is not a flyer. This is not shooter-induced. How do we know that? Because the group just two-tenths of a grain below it has some shots over here to the left, and two-tenths of a grain above it, this shot would be right in here. So that was not a shooter-induced flyer. However, sometimes when I'm interpreting OCW tests, I can tell when the shooter has induced a flyer, and I take that out of the um, out of the equation when I'm telling them what charge to use. Right here, we got a lot of lateral spread. None of this is shooter induced. I can tell by looking at the target, and I can tell by where it goes after the 40.4 grain charge. It begins to make this crescent pattern. This is something I have looked for through the years to tell me that you're getting close. You're red hot. You're getting to where 
you're about on that optimal charge weight because what will end up happening when you find that crescent pattern like that, you will have the next increment. This crescent pattern is uh, almost putting a parenthesis around one end of where this group's going to be. And look at this. First shot, second shot, third shot, fourth shot. Now, what about this third shot? Shooter induced? I do not think so. Even though that is really tight, you take a caliber off of that, that's about a, a little little under half minutes of half minute of angle. But this shot is just right here where the 40.6 grain was. So that's not a shooter induced pull. That's just where 40.8 is going to group. But where is our scatter node? Well, it's right there. Look how bad that group is. And you want to see that. You want to see a bad group. Whoa, I've got a bench rest gun. It shoots them all in the same hole every day. I've been challenged on that. And I have shown those folks that have challenged me that I can still find their scatter group. I can still show them where it's at. And, um, and then they end up going with the load that uh, I predicted. What would we do? 1.5% above 40.4 grains, scatter nodes 0.6 from the OCW, I'm going to go with 41 grains as the high OCW node. You have another one 3% below that at 39.8. If you're not comfortable shooting that much powder, then use 39.8. That's going to be an accurate charge weight. We were getting a 2,800 feet per second at uh, in this general area here, so that's respectable velocity for this cartridge and that bullet. And uh, we then would uh, go with an optimal charge weight of 41.0 grains. Had no pressure signs. The Peterson brass did wonderful, and then that's the wrap. Um, you can check out this system at my website ocwreloading.com and uh, see what you think. Thank you for your time. Thank you.